You guys ran down to Corretero and I pick up the uh, Mexican car down here. Turns out it's been a few years since I drove a clutch. We were down to lot. Uh, we made a deal on a uh, 2011 uh, Leon Cupra. A lot like a Golf GTI, but you can't have this in the U.S. It's actually a Spanish make, uh, but they're they're both actually owned by uh, by Volkswagen. And so uh, we've got uh, the last of the cash to pay that off. And uh, brought a few, uh, a lot of it the other day. And then had to have some more transferred down from the states. 184,000 is about 9,500 dollars. So it's a this is a nice car. It's sporty. Uh, it's it's a fun car, but it's not like a super high end car. We actually drove a brand new Leon Cooper the other day, and they go for about 26,000 dollars down here in Mako. So I, I'm like, yeah, we don't need to do that though. We don't need to spend that much money. Has about uh, 60,000 miles on it. Real nice shape and should be pretty cool. So they must have ours. They must have had ours out to get in the oil change or something. It's not here yet. Nissan Kicks, that looks like a pretty fun car, although not super, not super fast. That's uh, about 15 grand, that's a 2018. So those don't actually cost much. That's a new car, basically. Uh, it's, uh, one of the ones we looked at, we looked at the GTI. I really thought about buying a GTI, but the newer GTIs were about, six, we saved about six grand by just getting the used Cupra. Uh, this is a, this looks like a, this is a, John, this is a Paceman, Mini Paceman John Cooper Works. That's a nice car. We actually looked at the minis, but for now I decided to get uh, a non-mini because there's just so little space in them for hauling the family and stuff. You know, we have the van, the van is our main family car, and so we kind of got this to have a smaller car to do errands and stuff in, is what we got the Cooper for, but as much as I enjoyed the minis, just enough practicality that we actually can haul the family in it still if we want to, and the Cooper is that way. It's a sporty car, but I can still fit the family in the back if I want to, which is uh, pretty cool. So yeah, we got it paying uh, cash down here. Don't want to do uh, a loan in Mexico. The banks are totally screwing people over down here, taking advantage of them. 10, 15% interest rates for brand new cars. It's crazy, the banking cartels of. Bien. Oh, see, see, it's the panic button. Oh, see, see, comprendo. See. Okay, we got it. She's all paid, ready to roll. After five minutes, the four way flasher light. Spanish cars. I'm trying to figure out. It's been a while, okay, guys, since I've used a clutch, all right? I can do this. It's not like I've never trained on a clutch. Let's just say it's a little scary. And I had them back it out of the lot for me because. Well, I think everyone was afraid I was going to wreck one of their other cars. All right. Made it to the gas station. One of the first problems, because it's supposed to be a powerful car, and like, I'm like, why does it feel so gutless? And Nathan's all like, well, the turbo has to kick in. And it felt different than the other day, and then I realized I was in third gear. So, yeah, you got to, you got to like clutch the thing. Um, hopefully, we don't need a new clutch before the end of the day. Okay. Bien, gracias. This is terrifying. Turns out it's been a few years since I drove a clutch. So, look. We've decided we're just gonna stop right away at the insurance company. <laughs> Not a huge fan of insurance, but here's the thing, actually in Mako, like you don't assume someone else is going to be insured in Mako. So if someone wrecks your car, you don't assume they're gonna have insurance. If you wanna insure your car, you insure your own car. And there's really no law about insuring your car here, is there? I don't think there's a state law. Officially? It technically is on the, on the federal highways, but, but nobody the, the fact is probably what? 30% of people actually have insurance? Maybe. Yeah, so if you get a car and you wanna insure it, you insure it yourself. But if you get a car and it has a clutch and you're terrifying on the roads and you're not sure what's gonna happen, well, you could also get insurance if, if that makes you feel comfortable. You got insurance? So you just, uh, look, the title's in our name. I don't know technically how the rules work here, but they don't really care about those. So the, the title's in our name. It's my car officially. Uh, we just stopped by the insurance place and it was about, like this is kind of maybe kind of overkill, but uh, 
we got full coverage on it and it was about 600 bucks for a year, which, and it was more, it's high because it's a sport car and it's a turbo. So probably it's actually about the same. They don't- You're like, everybody crashes these or gets them stolen. So they're expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, everybody crashes them, which is why we came here immediately. Cause with the way I drive a manual, that possibility definitely exists. I'm trying to figure out in Spanish how to explain to people that they really don't want to be behind me. Cause when I clutch, I tend to roll back. Okay, here we go, here we go. Okay, we're going. Come on, R2, we're going. Okay, we didn't die. The car is moving and I did not rear end the person. Uh, excellent day. Gracias. So we stopped at this premium buffet, it's like 15 bucks, and they keep just like bringing us like roast meat that they like slice off skewers. Yeah, with the grill and a buffet mixed together. Yeah, something like that. And it's not, this is not, this is not Golden Corral. All right, just saying. Wow, this is one of those moments where I feel like I should be more hungry, need more food, but they just kept bringing meat. That are always over there. That's like the equivalent of the FBI. Those are like the uh, organized crime federalities. Which is ironic because organized crime is usually government, so you gotta wonder, right? <laughs> Do you come back home? Kids, everybody fit in there? Yeah, yeah. The whole family can fit in there because you have an extra person without a seatbelt here. No one freaking cares. A couple of the things on our list in shopping for a car in Mexico, I wanted uh, I, something a little bit snappy, a little bit sporty. I'm not a money guy that can afford supercars, but I wanted something in that hot hatch category. So we were looking at, uh, we actually looked at Volkswagen Beetle Sports because my wife likes them. And I'm like, can we get something a little more macho than that? Uh, looked at the Mini Cooper. Those were fun. I drove a couple of those. Uh, the problem is the back seat is just so small. It really is just for two people. Whereas in a car like this, you can legitimately cram people into it. This is just as fast, probably faster, has more horsepower than most of the Mini Coopers do. The Cupra, even from a 2011, has more horsepower than the current model uh, Golf GTI, even though it's the same engine. It's just tuned differently. So Sandra claims that she can drive a clutch better than me. I'm, I'm thinking that's highly improbable. Test it off on dirt roads. See how, see how the Cooper off-roads? Very slow. So nothing scrapes, nothing whacks hard. Oh, I don't want to die today. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Did you have fun there? So my boy Asher is turning seven. Asher's my quiet one. And sometimes the, the quiet kid is just kind of off to the side, right? As a parent, you have to kind of go out of your way, I think, to make sure that, that your quiet kids are getting the attention they need and that they're engaging with things. And the outgoing ones, of course, you got to pay attention to them too, but, but the outgoing kids are a little more in your face, they're a little more pushy. They'll tell you what they want a little more. Uh, Asher's my quiet guy and I wanted to get him something for his birthday, his first birthday down here in Mexico, his seventh birthday in life, that uh, was a little memorable and kind of engage him. He's kind of a mechanical guy. And so I got him this sweet, this sweet RC car, not like a cheapy uh, Walmart car. This is like the real deal. What do you think? Pretty awesome. Careful. Try and steer. Woo! Do some spin outs. Steer hard and steer hard and hit that throttle and see how it spins out. Ice time. Birthday ice cream. This is good stuff. This is the real deal. This place has a ton of flavor. It's probably 30 or 40 flavors. And Ice cream for the whole family, what's that, like six people, was about 10 bucks. So here's a tip for those of you that have real leather that uh, 
don't know this because I didn't, because apparently most of the leather cars that I had were not real leather. Real leather is high maintenance. I, I did kind of know that. But what I didn't know is that a little bit of water would turn it hard. Kind of makes sense, right? Kind of like how they made leather armor, okay? So there was a little bit of water damage in here. And then I have to confess, I left the sunroof open and I got some more rain on it. And so that made it worse. The, tap, the upholstery shop said they could probably do some reconditioning and restore this, but I kind of wanted a, a really cool interior anyway in here. That was part of the thing, because down here in Mexico, having an interior done is not nearly as much uh, money as it is in the States. A cafe leather kind of color on the edges. They're gonna do an orange in the center, and then we're gonna leave the original leather Cupra. Uh, it's gonna cost us about 6,500 pesos or $360 somewhere in there to have the whole thing done. So we're gonna see how this goes. And that interfaces with this computer that you actually program uh, for the for your vehicle on your computer, and then everything links up. And you fill that hole with goodness. Got the uh, Pioneer 2300 installed in there. All the uh, Maestro cables worked uh, in here, and it uh, fit right in. The Volkswagen adapters fit right into the Seat, and they even installed a rear view camera, all the sensors are interconnected that were OEM in the car, the whole work. So pretty sweet, we got that done. And uh, on Tuesday, we're gonna run over and have the seats redone. And then this thing will be pretty much ready to roll. Okay, so we got the new upholstery in, took it down there. They left the original Cooper logo, but they redid all of the seats, gave us an orange. In the future, we might do some orange accents or something on the body. So I kind of went with that orange because I thought it would look cool on the outside. It's uh, front and back that we have the orange installed in. And I gotta say, it <laughs> it looks pretty cool. So overall experience buying a car in Mexico, it's not a big deal, right? This is something that people that are coming down here ask, right? Can we own a car? Is there restrictions? Can we own land? All these things, can we do this? Can we do that? Generally speaking, Mexico is a much more freedom-minded country than the USA. It doesn't mean there's not bureaucracy and, and goofiness and restrictions, but yes, you can buy a house. Yes, uh, you can own land. Yes, there may be some, some small restrictions if it's like coastal or borderland, uh, if you're not a citizen. Uh, yes, you can buy a car. Yes, you can register uh, the car. They didn't give us any trouble. Uh, we didn't have to hire even a Hestor or anything to register. If, if they're giving you trouble registering, you can hire a Hestor, which is somebody that works through the bureaucracy, and uh, they'll just kind of help the paperwork go through for you. <laughs> we bought it through the dealer. They did most of the paperwork, uh, dealt with most of the taxes. We just went in and transferred the plates over, which cost like 50 bucks, I think it was, to get the plates. Of course, like in the States, uh, it, if if you want everything totally legit, you want to get plates, you want to get everything transferred over, the registration or the tarjeta de circulation, as they call it, uh, they're going to want their tax cut, right? You know, the, 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 the theft of taxation is present no matter where you go in the world. One nice thing here, though, it's very common for people here just to buy a simple car and they never even change it. They don't update the tags. Uh, they don't change the plates because, again, it's a much more freedom-minded society. Police aren't allowed just to shoot you for everything. I'm not recommending necessarily that a visitor do that because as visitors, everything's more difficult. The language, the, the politics, the bureaucracy, what we're dealing with, what the rules are. But generally, instead of like we often think in the United States of, of can I do this or is this legal, just assume it's legal unless, unless it's something bad, unless you're hurting someone. If you're concerned about it, if you're buying from a private party, for example, uh, my parents bought a car from a private party and they just met the private party at the transfer office right at the registration office and because of that because they wanted to make sure everything was legit and it ended up in their name they ended up having to pay the tax right uh, but you want to make sure it has the original invoice that functions as the title and they can just sign it over to you regardless of whether it's ever been transferred into anybody's name legally my recommendation would be if you want everything you want the tarjeta de circulation which the, is the registration uh, you want, you know, you want the title transferred into your name. You want all the paperwork legit. You want license plates. If you want everything done and you want to go by the book because you don't want to fight it, you can just go to the vehicle licensing office, the tax office. Usually this is at the pres uh, municipal presidency uh, where they do... Uh, transfer taxes, license plates, all that kind of stuff. And so you can go in there and you could just say, okay, I want to make a deal with you on this. We'll meet at the municipal presidency and transfer everything. Over. Has gone in for a couple of small repairs. Apparently, as I'm understanding, when you buy from a dealer here, they're required to give you, I believe it's a six month warranty. 
so you're not getting a lemon. So I'm guessing that doesn't apply to a private party, but that is one thing to consider is I bought this Cupra from a dealer and there's been a couple minor issues. The turn signal switch had to be replaced. That was probably expensive, no, considering it's uh, an OEM switch. It was the whole assembly, uh, new headlight, things like that. And so as I'm driving it, right, I'm getting the glitches worked out. And rather than just it's as is, I can actually take it back for a few months and have them uh, fix up the problem. So that has been pretty nice. Uh, I would ask, of course, but it looks to me like if you buy from a dealer, that's that's fairly norm. If you buy it from a semi nuevo. Hey guys, that's what it was like buying a car in Mako. Hope this was interesting. Hope you guys found it uh, useful. If you come down here and go out and take some photos of my favorite model and we're gonna drive a little, have some fun in this car. Let's head up to the Camino Sinuosa, Spanish for fun windy roads that you wanna drive a Leon Cooper on and just whip it around a little.